What's up everybody? Welcome to another Tips and Tricks video of Dire Mole Tribute Runs as a Hunter. This video assumes that you have done these before or you've at least watched one of the many many tribute run videos that are out there. And I'm just about to load 30 tips and tricks into you. 20 to 30 seconds per each tip and trick and it's all relevant to farming content in Dire Mole North as a hunter. First off, let's talk about PvP skipping. You're probably gonna find that you're trying to get here, you're trying to get to Dire Mole, and no matter what you do, you get ganked when you're trying to get in there and it sucks and it's irritating and sometimes there's so much PvP there that you have to corpse walk. Well, guess what? You don't even need to do this. All you gotta do is have a key or a powerful Sephorian charge. Go to the Laris Pavilion, take off all your armor, open this door, and then go forth into the instance and die. Because guess what? All Dire Mole North, South, wait, there's no South, North, East, West, all these Dire Moles are the same instance. So you can die in one and go into the other. So boom, look at that. We just skipped all that crap. Next up is always healing your pet. This is trivial, but it's important. Every time you enter the instance, be in the habit of getting your pet to full health. You should always be trying to revive your pet, and if you can, doing it and getting it to full health. You are going to die sometimes because you call your pet and it's only at half health and it dies twice as fast and then you get screwed. So heal your pet. Also, play with your friends, guys. I know this is solo stuff, but if you're learning, you can play with other hunters. And let me tell you, you have so much more flexibility playing with another hunter compared to just playing alone. You have double the scatters, double the traps. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can do. It's great. I highly recommend it. Now, you are going to mess up. Expect to fail. That may sound dumb, but you gotta just keep trying new things and sometimes they're not gonna work and you're gonna die and you're gonna have to do it all over again. If you think that you're gonna be doing 20 minute runs and you're gonna be succeeding every time and just every 20 minutes you're gonna have X more gold because you got a new tribute chest every 20 minutes, you're probably either incredibly good at the game or you're being idealistic and dumb. You're gonna die. And when you die, make sure you don't feign too early, okay? You can see here I'm in a bad situation. Sometimes you can live, and usually it's through using a frost trap that you can activate right before you break the fame, right? And if you can get all of your enemies slowed, that's when you can thrive, especially using all of your different aspects. As soon as you can get out of melee range, if they're in a frost trap, you got monkey up, you're probably gonna live because there's very few mobs that can catch up to you. But try not to feign unless you absolutely have to. And also, don't scatter too much. You're about to see how scattering actually, you, you're used to just scattering all casts when you see them because it's your way to interrupt a mage casting a fireball on you or a polymorph or something, but you don't actually wanna do that in these runs because as you just saw, that ogre was running towards my pet, but now he's running towards me casting banish and boom, screwed. Next thing is double pulling. You're gonna be single pulling when you're learning this most of the time, but you can actually double or triple pull. As you see here, I just pulled with my pet, got them stuck in a trap, and then I'm running far enough away that the pet despawns, and then boom, I can just call him, heal him, and then send him to attack the next mob and return to the spot. And meanwhile, I'm running past without having to feign. And double pulling usually adds enough time that you can feign again. Now let's talk about the safety zone for slipkick. Whether you are a night elf or another class, you might not have access to shadow meld. If you have shadow meld, this is easier. But without shadow meld, you can still do it. This point right here to this point right here is safe for you, okay? You will not aggro anything except Eyes of Kilrog and Slipkick. And by running back and forth between this wall, you can prevent aggro from both without shadow meld. Next, I'm gonna show you a trick to survive aggroing on the ramp after your invisibility potion. You're often gonna find that you cut it too close. You don't run fast enough, or you were too far away in the beginning, and boom, look at that. I was invisible, but I didn't get far enough, and I aggroed these guys. You wanna get concuss concussive shots in, and use scatter shot as much as possible. Um, you just need to buy yourself a couple more seconds, because usually you need to buy like 12 seconds for your feint to go off, and understand it could be resisted. So now, 
you just gotta wing it sometimes, guys. And especially if you're frame playing with another hunter, you guys can survive so much crap. Look at this. We feigned here, but then freezing trap and boom distraction. Boom, one of us opens the door while the other's dealing with the ogre. We're okay, we lived, even though we messed up. And that's my goal with this guide. I want you guys to understand, you're gonna mess up. This is the whole process. And getting deterrence is gonna help with that process a lot. Like a whole lot, seriously. I underestimated deterrence, but man is it useful. Like right now, I tried to place a freezing trap. I was in shadow meld. I got like 15 seconds left on my feign cooldown. I was about to die. You see that? Super close to dying. But having deterrence really buys you that extra time. It means that most of the attacks that hit you miss you as long as you're facing the monster. So make sure you're facing them and then you can buy yourself enough time to get another feign in. This is another situation where I get so close to death. Look at that, oh, almost dead. Return, deterrence and a health potion saved my ass, but I feigned too early. And then that's the video you guys saw earlier. Iron grenades though, these are the best guys. I didn't use these at all, but they're freaking amazing. I love these things, like absolutely love them. Look at that, boom. I didn't have to use my pet. I didn't have to do anything. I just threw an iron grenade and ran past. It's only a couple seconds stun, but that is a powerful stun. And as you can see here, you can also use it to stun enemies and you don't aggro them. Now let's look at this escape ramp. Sometimes you're gonna have problems when you get to this ramp, you're gonna have a resist. You're gonna try and feign death, but then there's so many enemies here that, that you're more likely to be surrounded by enemies. And let me show you a trick you can use if you're at full health, only if you're at almost full health. You can just jump off the ramp right there, and then after 20 or 30 seconds, all aggro will be lost. Now you have to be really careful, because if the boss, Slipkick, sees you, he will teleport you, and you gotta avoid that. So I'm a night elf, so right here, all that I do is I shadow meld, because then he can't see me and it's okay. A lot of these bosses can see through Shadow Meld, but it does help you a little bit. So you can be Shadow Melded in a position that would normally make you visible if you weren't Shadow Melded and be okay. Even though they have stealth detection, that doesn't mean that stealth is useless against them, right? If I wasn't Shadow Melded here, he would see me and I would instantly get teleported to him, okay? Now what's interesting is only the bosses do this. I could shoot arrows at any of those other mobs and be fine. Now sometimes, especially if you use a Frost Trap, you're just gonna have to stay feigned. You're gonna have to stay like this and just wait. It's gonna help if you have track demons up because if a demon is in your frost trap, if one of those doom guards is in your frost trap and you get up, guess who he's bringing to you? All of his buddies. Now let's talk about killing the hyenas. You should kill the hyenas. You don't have to, but you should, okay? And the reason you should is because of this. You see this? I'm confidently fighting the boss. Oh, happy Skippy. I'm just fa- Oh my God, I just aggroed the hyenas. And guys, look, I am not the best tribute runner out there by far, but every time that's happened, I've wiped. So now I just reset the boss when that happens because it is genuinely quite hard for me to keep track of all three of the hyenas and the two bosses and live and kill the hyenas. I usually just die. So because of that, I just reset it. I'm just being honest with you guys. You guys can kill them quite easily. It does add some time, but I really encourage you to do this until you've killed the boss maybe like 30 or 40 times. You absolutely can just get to him and time it so that they just pass or you kill him right before and then the timing of the fight means they're not in the way. So now let's talk about that. How do you avoid the hyenas? It's really about getting there in time and make sure you're aware that they're there. Having track beasts help, but you really have to be thinking hyenas, hyenas, hyenas. You may think that that's easy to do, but if you're also learning the boss fight and doing that at the same time and something's going wrong or you're confused by something, boom, hyenas are on you, you're dead. One thing you can do that will help make runs more productive is to get in the habit of training your weapon skills. So you can bring weapons with you and equip them at certain points so that whenever you pass through these ogres, which you have to do if you're going to do certain kinds of pet spawns and kill the boss, you may as well give like 40 chances to level up your weapon skill. And so you can use this to replace whatever process you were using to level up your weapons before, provided that you actually work on this, right? It may be that you don't do tribute runs that much. Now let's look at how to do the safest 
pull that I do for the boss, which is using Viper Sting. So as you mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, I was just you know, wailing out on one of these guys, just trying to get some skill up. You will summon your pet to this spot right here, and then we will send the pet in to e attack King Gordok. I usually also place a hunter's mark at this point. So once the pet gets close, you wanna have them body aggro, and then as soon as they aggro, return and dash. And now use Viper Sting, but only use it while you're still moving, because then you won't shoot a regular arrow. Regular arrows aggro. Viper Sting does not aggro. It doesn't cause any threat. Now for the fast boss pull. If you're really looking at speed runs, then most of them are going to do something like this. You have, you're already up on this ledge and you haven't taken the time to bring your pet here. You're running here and your pet goes in to attack. As soon as it pulls aggro, then it runs back and despawns and boom. This is usually done with a wolf and that's because you can use Furious Howl. Anytime you use Furious Howl and you benefit from it like that, boom, that means that the wolf's aggro just went up and I don't have to worry about it. Now, if you wanna pull using Giant Stalker and Dragon Stalker, it's fine. All you have to do is make sure that your pet never lands a single melee attack. They have to body pull and not land a melee attack. As long as this happens, then you can use a full Giant Stalker or full Dragon Stalker set with zero problems. You will experience the exact same aggro pattern as before, provided your pet, pet never lands an attack. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I got tons more content, so stay in touch. We're gonna talk more about the boss fights. Now, this is a kind of more advanced tactic that's, I still have trouble doing this. So what you can see here is I've slowed the video down and we got aggro and now I sent the pet to attack and then that caused him to get in range of the boss's charge and then so he charged him. Normally, you wanna wait a bit longer to do that. But in that case, that's a, a just, you, you get an extra second to do it. And then if you want to rush and get all of the mana out of Cho Rush as much as possible when he's a priest, you can just eat his mind controls or his mind flays. That's one of the best ways to do it, okay? Now, when you're fighting the king, you're going to get feign death resisted. It's absolutely going to happen. You should anticipate it and stand in that spot so you can just jump backwards just like that. Because then you can use Cheetah and you can indefinitely kite the king by taking advantage of his jump patterns and how he paths around this. So you can just do that over and over and over again, except you go the other way. Depending on how far you jump and the angle of your jump, you can control which way the king paths around. So despite the fact that he's faster than you, even with Cheetah, even with improved Cheetah, you can keep him chasing you and he'll never land a melee shot on you. Now, here's a great trick. If, if you're doing this boss fight, you've probably been in something like this. You cast a viper, but you don't land a physical attack and he's wailing out on your pet. And you go and you try and jump and you use an arcane shot to try and get in touch with him, right? Because you can't just shoot him if he's out of the way. But guess what? You could just click on True Shot Aura and Cho Rush would come rushing right back at you, regardless of where he is. Better way to do it, okay? Now, sometimes you're gonna need to restart the boss fight. It's just inevitable, it's gonna need to happen. So when you do that, you are gonna feign, and then you wanna despawn your pet before you go into combat. And this little stretch you just saw is safe from going into combat. Any other place, you're gonna get into combat because one of the spirits will see you, and this complicates things. So all you gotta do is feign, and then run that way to despawn your pet. Because ideally, your pet doesn't die. Don't let your pet die all the time. All right, now let's look at some chest bones. There are two main chest bones that I check. The first one is right after this safe spot. It is right around this corner. And in this scene, it's actually not there, unfortunately. And you're gonna find that you just get message for people depending on when you play. Now, this is the second scene. And this is the one I have more luck with. It's in this big room with all the doom guards. And those are the two spots. There's a bunch of uh, book spots, but to be honest, I don't really care about the books. They're only like 50 gold now, all right? Now, you will get a buff when you beat this instance that makes almost all of the enemies unattackable. Now, this can be inconvenient when you're bringing people in without the buff. So all you have to do is log out and log back in, and then boom, you can attack enemies. And this is gonna help because it means you can distract enemies and have them chase you over and over and over again while your friends are going away. Okay? 
Now the easiest way to kill the insects, which you're gonna need to do for your friends to get into the instance easily, is to use these ledges to your advantage. You don't have to have deterrents, you don't have to have fancy abilities. In this case, I'm just using dense dynamite. Always start with an aim shot, it's gonna kill the first one, and then a multi shot, and then just try and uh, serpent sting as many as possible. And then, when they're all getting close, make sure you're using aspect of the monkey, unlike here, I'm using cheetah, and use dense, uh, dense grenade, and that's usually gonna get rid of everyone. All right, guys, that was everything. I hope you liked this video. If you enjoyed this kind of content, check out the other content on my YouTube channel. I have been a YouTuber for three years and it has completely changed my life. I teach people how to use the internet to live their best life and to find work that they love. I'm able to do whatever I want at any point during the day because I moved to a foreign country where the cost of living is minimal, my bills are minimal, and financial concerns are not of a worry to me because I earn in it online US business and I live in a country that has a very small cost of living, Nicaragua. I pay $150 for an office that's fully furnished, furnished a two bedroom house. I also pay $130 for another house just two blocks down the street in the capital with high access to almost everything that I need. All of my basics are cheap. Okay, this is my reality, it is my life. I have a luxury of making whatever kind of content I do, playing WoW all the time, teaching people. So if you wanna learn more about that, if you wanna have a more enriched life through usage of the internet, check out the rest of my channel. I got tons of videos, I offer a consultation service where the first consultation is free. Usually this is for accountability consultation. So this means that I help you figure out what you're trying to work on and I nurture and encourage you you essentially have this positive voice, this positive influence in your life that can allow you to have a better, more positive experience and be more enriching and bridge the gap between the person you wanna be and the person you are. I specialize in helping people accomplish these things using positive reinforcement and the internet. So if you wanna learn more, check out my YouTube link or look in the description below to find my Calendly link. You are welcome to set up a consultation at any point. You don't have to talk to me. All you do is go to calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman and you can pick a free 30 minute consultation or you can pick a paid 30 minute consultation. My rate is $20 per hour and I will work with you in any way possible. All of the information in my brain is yours to use. I will not hold anything back in any of these consultations or in any of my real conversations in general. You also have the option of just recording a video with me and we will publish that to YouTube and that is the payment. So if you want me to teach you something, you can literally have me just record me teaching it to you and then I publish that to my YouTube channel and you never pay me anything because you help me make content, okay? All right guys, best of luck. See you next time. Ciao.